Welcome everybody to Coffee with Chao Wei. So people ask me why is it sometimes late night with Chao Wei and sometimes coffee with Chao Wei. I guess it just depends on when I have time to do videos. So today we're going to answer the question that was the number one topic that was submitted uh, when we asked people what would you like Chao Wei to talk about. And the question is, how do you get to IBD Bouch? So this says a lot about the audience that I've been attracting, so generally younger uh, people and probably a number of my interns. And so I'm going to talk about how I got to uh, Bouch IBD. So um, I'm class of 2002, so that's like a long time ago. And I think uh, that has that time period is, is somewhat similar to what we're experiencing now, right? So the job economy is not great, and um, the uh, it's it's hard to to get into IBD. So if for, for those who can't remember what it was like back then, 2002 um, would mean that I started looking for a full time job uh, right after 9/11 happened. And um, since I was studying in the U.S., I naturally wanted to work in New York. But then, uh, because of what happened, uh, banks were not really recruiting. And even if they were, um, it would, was pretty hard for a, a non-U.S. citizen to get a, a, a position uh, in IBD. So, um, before I started my job recruiting season, I was still pretty optimistic. So after all, I'm from Wharton, I have a dual degree, I'm summa cum laude, I'm like Dean's List all four years, I'm, I have a minor in math. So I'm, I thought I was pretty uh, well qualified. So when I submitted my resumes, I probably submitted like a thousand resumes. Okay? And uh, I was called back uh, for interviews for five, like a grand total of five. And I, I didn't even make it to second round for Jeffries. So I'm, I was pretty disappointed. And But instead of uh, saying that, hey, I'm not going to pursue um, the role that I wanted to get into, I started to think uh, which other cities were not affected by 9-11 and, and which cities could hire me. So at that time, Singapore wasn't the financial hub it is today, and so I, I didn't really consider coming back to Singapore. Uh, but then I thought, okay, um, Japan is also a, a big city and also a financial hub on its own. Let me try to get a job there. So the first uh, advice that I wanted to give uh, people would be, to look beyond what you're comfortable with, right? Don't just say, hey, I, I definitely just want to work in Singapore or I definitely just want to work in Hong Kong. Uh, try to look beyond uh, your comfort zone and see where um, the demand is from, right? So you, you're the supply and you, you need to look for where the demand is. Um, of course, people will be like saying, oh, I'm not like uh, qualified or I'm not comfortable to move somewhere f far away or I want to continue to stay at home and eat my mom's home cooking or I have a girlfriend here. Uh, you know, in, in times like this, maybe it, you can't really be very choosy or choose to be uh, remaining in your comfort zone. So, so that's, that's point number one. So uh, point number two is how do you stand out among the pile of resumes? So in times when uh, companies aren't really looking to fill a lot of positions, there's probably like one or two slots. Uh, that's available. So when um, I joined uh, UBS Tokyo IBD, um, I was actually one of only two analysts that year, and the the the, uh, the other analysts actually left uh, within three months of being hired. So so for all for practical all practical purposes, I was the only analyst that year. So uh, uh, my point was that is that people are really. Uh, trying to not hire as many people or maybe they don't have the budget to hire as many people so um, they're really trying to look for one person to fill like at least like, three people's uh, uh, roles so uh, what I did to increase my chances of getting picked was to showcase 
that I speak uh, three languages. So naturally English, and I also speak um, a Mandarin, and um, I, and I said I was fluent in Japanese. Actually, at that time I wasn't really fluent in Japanese, and we'll get to that later. But then I still um, said that I was fluent, and uh, that means so the the key is not to say you should lie your way to get a job, but then um, you know there, there are always ways to improve yourself such that it doesn't it doesn't remain a lie. So I really did become fluent in uh, Japanese after a couple of months in Japan. So um, that's that's point number two, right? Make yourself useful. It's it's like like people would rather um, you know hire a Swiss Army knife that has like multiple talents uh, rather than have a specialized like sushi knife where you can only like cut sushi, um, especially in times when they have limited headcount. So point number three is. Uh, in in IBD, you work like super long hours. So naturally, the recruiter wants to hire somebody who is uh, interesting and good to hang out with at say two a.m. Right. So you shouldn't during interviews. You shouldn't come out as being super arrogant or I know it all because no one wants to hang out with anybody like that. Um, and if you are kind of a boring person, that's also not great because. People get really cranky at 2, 3 a.m. and there are a lot of times when you have to work those hours. So I think what got me the job at uh, UBS Tokyo, and you've got to imagine, like I'm fighting against all these native Japanese, and there are plenty of Japanese who can speak English as well. So speak, being uh, bilingual wasn't that much of an advantage. Yes, uh, being able to speak Mandarin fluently was a real advantage. Uh, uh, but it wasn't. I, I, I didn't think that was enough to tip me over because uh, I, when I uh, met with the other interview candidates on Super Saturdays, they are people who are equally uh, accomplished. They're also from Ivy League schools. Uh, I'm guessing their grades are equally as good. Uh, but I think what uh, got me the job was that I said my hobby was reading manga. And for those who don't know, manga is. It's Japanese comics, and I got so good at it that I mastered um, the Japanese language, which is actually which is actually true. And so, like to this day, I still speak Japanese a little f funnily because I'm like a manga character, and maybe I even like move and talk a little bit like those characters. So the so so what does this? Uh, mean right, so I'm not saying that hey, everybody go out to to learn how to uh, read manga or behave like a manga character, but it's to show passion in something. So a, a, a lot of um, uh, websites or guidebooks uh, talk about oh how to uh, you know score that IBD position right, and they say oh you must like be able to like memorize black shows or like solve um, you know these. Um, fit questions or even some IQ questions. I think um, being able, being proficient in finance or math is um, given. Like if you're not even good at that, then you shouldn't even apply. But what makes people stand out is being uh, passionate about something that you will try uh, really hard and excel in it. So that's why a lot of um, uh, IBD uh, units would hire sports people. At least in New York, that's that's what they do, because they show dedication and the ability to then persevere and become really good at what they're doing. So it doesn't have to be something um, you know super uh, noble like like crew or playing chess, right? So as I have demonstrated, I'm a real life example of how I told the uh, recruiters that I am super good at reading manga and watching anime and that got me my job. And I'm pretty sure that um, is one of the deciding factors because when I first joined the firm, somewhat everyone knew that I'm, I was like super into manga. So I think that, at least that was what people talked about. So anyway, so those are um, my three tips to getting um, an IBD vouch position in a difficult job environment. Hopefully this is helpful.